This video describes the components and the operation of the Toyota Key Off EVAP system. Uh, this, this system came into use around 2005, uh, and it's unique in the fact that it used this vacuum pump inside this pump module that's on the side of the canister here. Uh, it uses this in order to test the EVAP system about five hours after you shut the car off. Uh, it, so it has uh, some regular components in here, right? Fuel tank, filler neck, gas cap, purge valve, you know, just like any other EVAP system out there. Very similar to vacuum-based EVAP systems, right? Uh, but it has this pump module that includes an electric vacuum pump and an orifice in there to allow the system to self-calibrate. So what's unique to this, again, is, uh, is this pump module. Other than that, components are very similar to previous Toyota EVAP systems. Also unique on this is the vent for the system is up by the filler neck. So if you are smoke testing this vehicle and have the vent valve open, you will see smoke leaking out around the fuel cap, and it looks just like you have a bad fuel cap. But anyway, this is where the system vents. It's also where it picks up fresh air when the system purges. So it's sucking fresh air in from here through this tube, through the canister, uh, and, uh, uh, and then, of course, through the purge valve and into the motor. So here's kind of a cutaway of this system. You can see an electric motor in here. There's a mechanical vacuum pump. There is a pressure sensor in there to let the PCM know system pressure. And then there's this vent valve in here uh, that plums the pump to different things. So it'll plumb it to an orifice so it can self-check and it'll plumb it to the charcoal canister so it can check for leaks. So here's a little graphical layout of how this test is gonna run. And you can see it takes several minutes. So this is seconds along the bottom. Uh, and, uh, and then this is gonna show the operation of all the individual components. So I got a purge valve, vent valve, pump, and then of course a pressure sensor here. So for the first, uh, well, it depends, they say 10 seconds, but it might be a minute or so. The system just is at rest and there will be atmospheric pressure in the tank and everything is shut off. Purge valves off, vent valves off, pumps off. After this short resting period, the pump turns on and it self calibrates. So the pump is then plumbed to this 20 thousandths orifice, which is of course the minimum, uh, or the maximum amount of leak we can have is 20 thousandths. So it plumbs to this orifice, pump turns on, and we're gonna see 17, 18, 19 inches of water column, of vacuum develop in the tank. So this is its calibration. So say today at this atmospheric pressure with this amount of fuel in the tank, uh, this is what a 20 thousandths leak will look like. So again, pump turns on, we see this vacuum develop. And so this is the number it's shooting for when it checks the fuel tank and EVAP system for leaks. So. Pull 17, 18, 19 inches of vacuum. Next, the vent valve will turn on, and now this pump is plumbed to the tank. So you see the vacuum go away, and then it'll slowly start to pull vacuum in the tank. And again, it wants to beat this number. It wants to beat the 19 inches of water column, or whatever it calibrates to, right? So uh, pulls the vacuum. When it beats that number, it says, okay, we've, uh, we've passed the leak check. Now I want to check my purge valve to make sure that works. So we turn the purge valve on. And what that does, it creates a vacuum leak. It's gonna allow fresh air sucked out of the intake uh, into the EVAP system. So I'll see my vacuum mostly disappear. I'll still see weak vacuum in here. Then it closes the vent valve and the purge valve, by the way. And, uh, and then it's plumbed back to this orifice where it's going to do a self-check and then the test aborts. So with that, it's checked purge valve operation, vent valve operation, pump operation, and see whether the system leaks. So let's watch this in action. Uh, here we've got a 2011 Toyota Camry. From the engine main menu, we go to EVAP system self-check. And here's a, uh, some, a little bit of animation to see how this thing works. So here's my vent valve here. It's my 20 thousandths orifice. Purge valve, charcoal canister, vacuum pump, fuel tank pressure sensor. So we are going to sit in this, we're in this resting phase right now. So everything is turned off. 
measure the voltage at the fuel tank pressure sensor. It's going to be around 3.6, 3.7 volts. Uh, but we're going to look at it on the scan tool. We're going to see purge valve off, vent valve off, vacuum pump off, very little vapor pressure, if any, inside the tank. Now we enter our calibration phase. It takes maybe a minute or so. So the vent valve is going to energize. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the pump is going to energize. My apologies for that. Uh, and uh, the pump now is pulling against this 20,000 orifice. And my fuel tank pressure sensor is going to see that. So then it records. All right, there's my number. So we see in voltage here. But again, we're going to see the 20,000 calibration on the scan tool. So I got purge valve off vent valve off vacuum pump on and right now i developed 19.3 inches of water column inside this system now again pump is turned on we activate the vent valve and it's going to plumb my pump to my fuel tank and charcoal canister so pump is on vent valve activates Pump is now connected to my charcoal canister and my fuel tank, and we start to pull a vacuum in that system. When it reaches a maximum vacuum, of course, it's going to record that number, and as long as it beats the calibration number, we're in business. So let's watch this happen. So purge valve off, vent valve is on, vacuum pump is on, now I start to build vacuum in the system. So here you see I got... Uh, 1.8 inches of water column, and it slowly builds. I got 11.3, 19.6, right? I'm right on the door of this thing passing, and 20 inches, and then I reach all, oh, let me go back here, just about 21 inches of water column, and we beat our 19 inches, so this check looks like it passes. Now what we do, we have to check the purge valve. So purge valve turns on. Let me go back, sorry about that. Purge valve turns on, it's going to vent the vacuum that's in the tank. So again, activate the purge valve, fresh air, because the engine's not running, so fresh air is going to be able to pull in through this, through the charcoal canister, and it will have access to my fuel tank pressure sensor. So again, activates, uh, fresh air now will enter the system, and I know that the purge valve turned on, so we just checked its operation, and again, pressure sensor should see a vacuum drop in the tank. So here, purge valve on, vent valve on, vacuum pump on, and weak vacuum. So 4.4, almost four and a half inches of water column of vacuum. So I know I just went from almost 21 inches to 4.4. Uh, so I know fresh air entered the tank, purge valve works. All right, second calibration. So it's going to check itself now that it's done. So Everything turned off except the pump. We're plumbed to our 20,000 orifice. We pull to make sure we reach our 19 inches of water column again. Fills in my number. Here's the scanner data. Purge valve off, vent valve off, vacuum pump on, 19.47 inches of water column. So poof, uh, second calibration passes. And then resting phase happens for a very short period of time. Everything all turned off. Make sure we have atmospheric pressure in the tank. Fill in that number. As long as everything goes according to plan, poof, that's it. No trouble codes, system passes. So again, everything all turned off. Trace vacuum, 0.165 inches of water column, just nothing. So this vehicle has passed all of its tests and will have set no pending trouble codes. So now that you know how this test works, let's check it out on this 2006 Toyota Avalon. This car has got a P0455 gross leak code and a P1441, I believe, purge valve code. And these codes will always set in conjunction on these cars because the PCM has no idea of knowing is there a problem with the purge valve or is there a gross leak. So you see, and we're doing just like we did before, getting a system tests, command this test to run, read the warning and instruction screens that uh, come up. Basically, you're, you're continuing your way through this. Uh, uh, just being agreeable on the scan tool. Uh, it tells you to turn the key off, turn the key back on again. 
I always choose graphing mode. So we'll go graphic display here and it allows us to see, you know, of course, charts of this test happen. So it's easier to see what's going on. So my important data here on screen is uh, top left is vacuum pump, purge valve, next one down, top right hand corner vent valve, bottom right hand corner is fuel tank pressure. So notice trace pressure in the tank, everything turned off. So no pump, vent or purge valve turned on. First thing that's gonna happen is see vacuum pump turns on and very rapidly we're gonna build vacuum in the tank. So you see we got 16, not quite 17 inches of water column of uh, vacuum inside the tank. Then, and that's my calibrated value. Then the vent valve turns on. So now I'm plumbed to the tank and my EVAP system. And notice, no vacuum whatsoever develops in this EVAP system. So this thing absolutely does have a gross leak. Um, and, uh, and so anyway, it's gonna continue to try to build vacuum. So this part here is gonna be a little bit boring as, uh, as time stretches out here while it's running this check. So it's given the car a chance to build vacuum, but it's, uh, but it's not happening. So notice I'm gonna zoom out on the data here a little bit. And then right after I do, you're gonna see the purge valve turn on. And when it does, this is signaling that the test is just about over, right? So it turns the purge valve on, it's waiting for vacuum to, you know, to disappear in the tank. And of course it never changes. Then we go back to my calibration again. So again, my 17, 18, 19 inches of water column to calibrate. And then this thing says, that's it, I'm done. Now I want you to go check for pending codes to know if there's anything wrong, you know, did, did the system pass or fail? So notice I got a PO441, not a 1441, uh, purge valve flow and a gross leak check or gross leak code. So here we're gonna, the car is repaired now. So now we are going to go uh, to run this test again and you're gonna see what it looks like when it runs to completion and it actually passes. So here we go again system at rest, everything all turned off, trace vacuum in the tank, PCM's now going to turn on the vacuum pump and we are going to get a system calibration. So here we go, start to develop vacuum in the tank, notice this time we get 17.3 inches of water column, something very close to that. This segment of the test ends, vent valve turns on, now we're plumbed to the tank. So if everything goes right, this is just what it's gonna look like on a graph. So notice we're building vacuum here, we're at seven inches of water column, eight inches of water column. And remember, this is gonna continue until we beat our old number. So the old number is 17.324 inches of water column, and we're heading right straight for it. So it looks like this is gonna be a successful test. Level one off a little bit. And now we're right down to it. So notice now my vacuum number is increasing and we beat our number. So uh, very quickly here, the PCM is gonna say, all right, man, I'm happy with this. And then you're gonna see the purge valve turn on. As Soon as it does, boom, vacuum in the tank goes away. Notice again, trace vacuum, only a couple inches of water column. Vent valve turns on again with the purge valve off. We're gonna do a calibration again, get our 17 inches of water column, and then that's it, this test is over. All righty, so now I gotta do what I did before. So test is completed. Gonna to have to go check my pending codes. If we're successful, no codes present. So that's it, there, there was gross leak and no leak on a Toyota key off EVAP system. So here's what happens when we smoke test this 06 Toyota Avalon. It has uh, Toyota's key off EVAP system. Now I can use an EVAP tester, you know, smoke machine in order to find leaks on these. But uh, if I treat it like a vacuum based system and I go to seal it up, uh, these systems don't completely seal. So I want to show you this in action. So, uh, so I'm going to get my scanner ready so, uh, so I can uh, use my smoke machine to test the system. So while I want to, um, uh, set this up so that we can close the vent valve. So actuator tests, find my vent valve. And then if you care to find, you know, fuel tank pressure sensor or any of that, your, uh, 
Um, you know, you're able to do it if you want to. Um, I don't necessarily care about it here for this test. So uh, I'm going to turn the smoke machine on. We see our normal full flow. This tells me purge line isn't collapsed or restricted. Uh, charcoal canister is able to flow freely. Vent valve isn't stuck closed. And uh, so I have full flow through the system and it's one of the tests I wanna perform on my EVAP, on my EVAP system. So this is good. So then I close my vent valve. So I turn the vent on and then immediately I watch my uh, flow through the smoke machine start to drop off. So now I'm at uh, a leak of about, you know, 50 thousandths of an inch down here to 40 thou. And a normal vacuum based EVAP system will seal entirely. You'll be able to smoke the thing easily to less than 20 thousandths leak and uh, most certainly let the, you know, uh, down to five or 10 thousandths as well. These systems, however, do not entirely seal when you close the vent, at least not under pressure. Now it'll pass a test when you run the vacuum test, you know, the self-check, but when you smoke test these, they don't smoke test to zero. And I will show you where the leak is. It comes, uh, it comes through the vent on these when these systems are pressurized. So we're continuing to watch this. I've got a uh, 19 or 20 thousandths leak. We're gonna move now to the back of the car and, uh, and see where, uh, where this leak is going. So we are approaching this car here from the left corner. We're gonna come up on our EVAP system. I already have some stuff apart. So uh, charcoal canister is back in here and then uh, uh, and vent valve is included and then we come out to uh, this looks like a uh, like a fuel separator or vapor separator uh, and then we have this little rubber hose and it goes from there up to my filler neck and this vents air all the way up by my fuel filler so we uh, when you smoke this when these vent valves don't seal all the way you'll see a little bit of smoke come out around the fuel door uh, if you pop this hose off, you'll see it's, uh, you know, it's coming out of here. So uh, anyway, the vent valve under pressure doesn't always seal entirely. And so even though these systems will pass an EVAP leak check under vacuum, uh, when you smoke test them with a smoke machine, they will very often leak the tiniest little bit of smoke out of here. Now, it's really hard to see, uh, you know, with a camera, but there is the tiniest little wisp of smoke coming out of there. If you plug this up uh, so you can, you know, uh, plug this hose off or, uh, or just cap this, whatever you want to do, the leak goes away. So it looks like this system has a leaky vent valve. But again, on these key off systems, this, it's normal for that vent valve to leak a little bit. Now, some of them do seal up very nicely, but uh, it is quite possible to have one of these systems pass a leak check uh, and still have a little bit of smoke wisping out of it like this one, uh, this one here does.